Hi everybody, I'm Liron Cohen. I'm Mimi Torchin. And we're Lady Parts TV. And some of you are used to us shooting in the dark. And that usually means we're waiting to talk to somebody special. Now in the past, it's dark, that means we're waiting for somebody... From Australia. For, yeah, from an entirely <laughs> different time zone. This time that's not the case. We're waiting for somebody who is in our time zone but is so busy that the only time she could make to talk to us was late at night and we're so grateful. Grateful to her too, the great Wendy, Wendy Cruzen, the first lady of Canadian television and film. So we are thrilled. She's one of our so favorite, thrilled. favorite actresses. For uh, many years. Ever since Leron was a little girl. Uh, no, no. no. Let's joke. not go that far. No. But anyway, we, we've both been um, pretty much lifelong fans of hers. Yes. So uh, This is a treat for us. And yes. we've waited a long time. I mean, time. I can't say, I guess, lifelong because I'm older than Wendy. So, uh, <laughs> yes. But a uh, long time. Anyway, we're so thrilled. We're so excited. I'm and sure that you are so too. Honored. Yes. Well, she's just super, super nice. That's all. Anyway, without further ado, let's meet Wendy Cruson. Hi. Oh, thank you for being so patient about this. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Well, we're so course. excited. Thank you for doing it. At I 10 o'clock at night after a long, long day of shooting. I oh, really well, appreciate I'm it. so happy that I still have some makeup on so then I could... You look yeah, fabulous. Great. We, I'm, I'm I, no makeup at all. So. I have a little <laughs> bit on, but I'm old. You know, yeah. old. Uh, I, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you're worth the wait, and thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, taking the time. First lady of Canadian film and television. Oh, well. <laughs> Worth I'm, the sure, wait. I'm sure you've been referred to that way before. That's very kind. That's very... No, you've earned it. You, you know, work hard. I, I was wondering, since you all are still connected to the Queen, can you be made a dame? <laughs> hey, there ain't nothing like a dame. There I ain't nothing wonder. like, except for a broad. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> um, I think they take more serious actresses to be dames, yeah. you know, stage actresses and things. Not I don't know Walters. that the of television is really going to be made a day. I'll, I'll but, write a letter. I would vote for you. <laughs> oh. If I were queen, you would be oh. a dame instead Thank of just you. abroad. <laughs> Well, so, yeah. so she, I guess we better begin so should that you get, don't uh, yeah, run should, out of uh, so battery. Although I would like point. to just sit and chat. But, you, know. <laughs> you could just sit and chat. Yes, I can always run back over and plug it in. That's true. That's true. Because we've got all night. You don't. You. Oh, but you do have tomorrow off, don't you? I do have tomorrow off. I've got all evening. Okay. Thank you. You're thank so you. kind to do this. Of course. Oh, you I'm are. So? And, and well, so first of all, where are you? I'm just curious. You're in a hotel, so that means you're not at home. No, I'm not at home. I'm in North Bay, Ontario, which is a remote community up on Lake Nipissing. And um, it's quite beautiful, I have to say. It's up kind of in the Canadian Shield. So we have all that wonderful granite and the big pine trees everywhere and beautiful sunsets and huge skies. It's really nice. Lots of bugs. No. Oh, well, that of the lethal like kind it. or just the annoying kind? Uh, you no, know, they're just they're just annoying. Okay. And there's a lot of them. So, so you're obviously you're shooting on location. Yes. What, what can you tell us what this project is? Yes, I am shooting a new Hallmark series. Oh, we've heard. Oh, of yeah, that. we've heard about yes. this. Tell us Have, more. Yes, yes, and it's called When Hope Calls. And it's set in 1916 in a small frontier town. But I have a great part. I'm a widow who's a rancher. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yes. And so she rides, gallops in. So I get to be the cowboy. Oh, you're not, you're not my not fantasy. Ride, oh, yeah. Of course you know how to ride horses. Yes. I've seen you ride horses. Before. No. No? I, I'd forgotten completely Do how south. to ride. south. I remember that. That's right. Do, do oh, my south. gosh. You're so good. Yeah. She is. <laughs> But I've had to learn all over again, and it's much harder this time around. <laughs> and it hurts the next day, doesn't it? It, it, hurts. <laughs> it does. I'm a Texan. I rem well, I'm, I've been in New York for 50 years, but uh, I do remember the, the pain the next day of horseback the, riding. The next day. But, but the costume. But it looks great. Did we see a picture? I think yes, we did. Yes, you look very, very good yeah. with that hat, <laughs> that Western drag. Oh, I love that. It's the best wardrobe ever. Really, I adore wardrobe because you just go in and you put this on and suddenly 
there's the character. You don't even have to do. There she is in all her glory. You know? I'm sure that's true. That's for sort Frankie of Olivier. Drake, yeah. Olivier. That was sort of his uh, his approach, as I recall from hearing interviews with him. That once he had his costume on and his makeup, there there it was. There it was. Exactly. I completely agree. So we had a very talented um, wardrobe designer, Stephen Wright who said, I'm going to dress you. He said, you're in riding pants, all in frock coats and mm. the big vest. And it's so powerful. Oh, it is. It's, and it's sexy too. And all the other girls are in their corsets and they're oh. And I'm <laughs> riding in in my riding pants and my knee high boots. Fantastic. I, yeah. bet, that I bet the costumes on Frankie Drake are fun too. Oh, they are. <laughs> Oh, good. And, and they're beautiful, too. Little hats and the, you know, and the, just the costumes little... are gorgeous. That costume designer is sensational. You look so beautiful on that show. Oh, thank you. Well, I'll tell you I said so. They yeah. glow. They're so, oh, I love them. I love fashion. So it's, yeah. I do, too. I just love it. It's so much fun. Now, we know better than to think you're only working on two things right now. You're usually working on about 10 at the same time. So what else are you working on? Well, the only two right now, they're both series. So for the summer, I'm shooting the two series. So I fly back and forth to shoot one and the other. And, you know, so that has been enough because even though I've spent a lot of years sort of working back to back, these days I'm thinking I, there's nothing wrong with taking some time off. Good girl. Doubling, you know, well, spending kids. Yeah, and that's that's good because we hear that. I mean, you've said before anyway from research that I've done that uh, no matter how long you've been in this industry and how established an actress you are, you still are very hard on yourself. You're still, you know, endlessly critical of yourself and insecure. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why exactly? <laughs> you never stop working. I I just, I just, there's something about it that every time you think, oh, that was my last job. They found me out. Now they know I can't act. <laughs> all a big game. It's all smoke and mirrors. I can't do it. And that'll be the end. So there's constantly, I don't know what that is, but there's always that fear. And Julie, my partner always turns and says, history shows that you will get another job. <laughs> Or several, or, or, oh, yes, or, or several. Or wherever it is that you hold all of your many awards, that should, you know, when you need a confidence boost, I, just look at that. I think all actors uh, sort of, most actors feel that way because of all those years of struggle, although I don't know how much you struggled before you, you hit because yeah. you've been working steadily a long time. Yeah, I have. I didn't feel like I struggled long. I didn't feel like a struggle anyway. It felt like fun, fun. and exciting <laughs> and, you know... So even waitressing while I was, you know, auditioning was always a blast. I loved it. So I never feel I never felt like it was a struggle. It was always pure pleasure. Well, that's a great answer. Yes, that means you're really is. in the right profession. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so if you if you do feel those insecurities all the time, how do you do it? Because it sure doesn't show. <laughs> that's I'm so glad because it all comes out before, and on the day, I just have to remember, just say your line and hit your mark. <laughs> Pray to the goddess of acting that she will come to you and you will just, you know, it will, it will sort of flow from you. And it does. And always, once you get into the scene, you're with the other actors, you're, you know, focused on what your objective is for the scene, then it always, it flows along quite nicely. And I try to Never let those insecurities show to anyone but you. But then, you, tell, but then you tell somebody in an but interview, and, that's it. and there it is, and then it's all over. Well, you know, it's like, to, to me, it was like I always had stage fright. I mean, I started off as an actress. I was not successful, so... Oh, did you? You were Oh, yes. Didn't everybody? I mean, I always say if everybody who wanted to be an actor or an actress made it, there'd be nobody doing anything else. But, so, but I remember having terrible stage fright until my first line. Yes. Until your first and line. And then th that, was, that was it, you know. Exactly right. That's exactly how it works. And t when you suddenly, you're in it, and there it goes. Just let it go, and, you know, it happens. You, you are a really wonderful actress, and uh, you are highly versatile. You, I, I've never seen anything of yours that I didn't love, and I've seen many, many things of yours. Uh, I, I was wondering, from your perspective, what do you think is your greatest asset as a as, uh, an actress? Um, 
my greatest asset as an actress? I, I guess maybe, I don't know, I feel pretty um, um, average. Do you know what I mean? I feel very average in, average in the way I look, average in the way I behave, average, so that then you could maybe be anything. Do you know what I mean? You mean like a vessel. On, yes, yeah, so you can be, something can be put on top of you and then you can become that. So if you're too definite in who you are in your personality or your, though people have done it with big personalities and, you yes, know, but they, they haven't, they haven't blended into the roles yeah, as well. It's a nice, it's a nice ability then to blend. I think when you're a bit of a average, average person, you know, well, it's a very interesting answer. Uh, I don't think of you as, as average at all. Uh, <laughs> and I think you probably have many, many uh, qualities, like your intelligence, and I'm sure you're very empathetic. But the thing to me that always strikes me is it doesn't matter what room I'm on, there's always a TV on in my life. When we hear, when I hear the Wendy Cruzen voice, <laughs> we can oh. tell it's you from any room in the house. And by the oh. way, Air Force One is on tonight. Oh, yes, 3.30 tonight <laughs> on some showtime. I was scanning to see if there were any movies I wanted to see. So you've got a residual coming, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, your voice is so distinctive. Oh, that's in, you know, I do, I do hear that from people often in an airport. So when I'm in an airport and talk to somebody at the ticket agent or some, somebody will come up and say, I wasn't quite sure, but I heard your voice. In <laughs> Santa Claus. <laughs> the Santa Claus it like on a loop for weeks on end Hilarious. It's but it's funny. interesting because it actually since you're talking about your voice and how you you blend in and we know that when you when you played to rodriguez you were even able to change that which i'm sure was hard work because you had to really really your voice had to deteriorate like that and um i know that you always talk about her as the the character that really impacted you the most so i don't want to ask you about that because it's been asked before but uh -huh. who would you say next to her was the character that impacted you the most you know that's so it's it's honestly it's a bit like saying i don't know your favorite child or something <laughs> you know what i mean it's really hard because i'm going to say like right now this is the character I'm loving the most is the one that I'm playing. I, I'm thinking back and, and certainly I loved playing Louise Arbour, who uh, was the um, Supreme Court Justice from Canada who went on to um, indict Slobodan Milosevic of crimes. Right. A very powerful performance. Yes, I, I didn't see that. But, uh... That was very, you know, uh, I, but I love playing real people. So playing her was great. Playing um, uh, Terry Evanson's wife in The Man Who Lost Himself was, I love playing real women that are, you know, uh, that exploration to me is always the most fun. So the fictional characters are fun in their own. They all have their own thing. You get to be on a plane with Harrison Ford, <laughs> you know, doing what, but, the real stories are the ones that stayed with me the long and the ones that that I think about when I think back on working are the ones that resonate with me the most. And I got to give uh, Louise Arbour her star on the Walk of Fame. Wow. She asked thrilling. To her, which was thrilling just to be that close to somebody who is, in fact, really smart and making changes in the world that are really important and is, who is truly courageous. That's thrilling. That's it's, the best. It's so interesting because I would think, not that I would know, but I would think that playing a real person would be would have would present its own challenges because you're always worried about do, you know doing them justice, especially if they're still alive and can see the performance. And you say that that's some, what you prefer. You prefer playing real people. So how is your how how does that work for you? And what like what how's it how is it different from playing a fictional character and how you prepare and how you feel about it? Well, usually you have. Like when I can, I meet the real person. So you have, I mean, there's nothing like that sort of in the flesh and blood in front of you person. You, as an actor, you get to observe all these little things about them that, you know, I, I'd forgotten, you know, the many trials of one Jane oh, Joe. my favorite. To the, uh, Amazing. So I got to meet these women and talk to them and get to know them and, there is something, there's a tremendous responsibility, of course, about doing them justice and playing them 
properly. And I always apologize profusely. In advance, just in case. (laughs) Honestly, this is going to be something completely different for me. It's going to be something in between us. But it's like this. When you're uh, investigating a character and the real person is there, it's like this treasure chest of, 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 you know, information. It's like you couldn't, in your imagination, could you even think up the the backstory? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and it's true. Real life is often more astounding than fiction. Yeah, and especially since I'm sure the people who get depicted in movies usually their stories are bigger. Well, yes, than... <laughs> otherwise they, they they wouldn't be depicted in movies. Right. I mean, they're usually <laughs> bigger than life, and there's a, a strong and uh, powerful. But I stories. love, but I love what you always say, which is ordinary people doing extraordinary things. I think that's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, um, and um, uh, you said that uh, plain strong women ha- has inspired you to become the strong prota- protagonist. Poor <laughs> protagonist in your own line. life. I just, I just ruined it. I know. Oh well. Uh, can you explain that to us a little bit more? Well, I think that uh, in the exploration of those women, in seeing, in just getting to know them in the way that I did, in seeing the journeys that they went through, you realize that that we all start in that same uncertain place, and that these women the extraordinary things they did really illuminated to me my own courage or my own ability to step outside of who I thought I was or my limitations to push beyond that to know that that I was actually capable of much more than I had ever expected of myself. And that really, it, it it just sort of opened a window for me in my mind. The longer I did that, the more I thought, oh, right, this is what people can do. I mean, if they can do that, I can certainly be brave in the ways in my life that I needed to be. And so it really, courage. yeah, it, it really just, it illuminated courage for me. That's beautiful. I like that answer. <laughs> and um, I, I, I think you know as that, a segue yeah yeah but, well <laughs> since we're talking about courage and I, I think you've, you've talked about it in that context before so it's not a surprise but um, you might know that we have a big following uh, much of our following is uh, gay women or right. um, what I especially love is a, a lot of women find us in that stage in their lives when they're actually questioning their sexuality their identity their their choices in their lives. And I, I love getting those emails, especially because uh, they oftentimes tell us that, you know, seeing us as confident gay women makes them feel empowered and more, you know, able to be more courageous about who they are and the truth of, of who they are. And um, you said before in interviews, and then you haven't been asked a lot about that, but we're going to ask you a we're lot. Gonna ask. <laughs> I mean, if not us, who? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> Um, you said that it was important to you to come out publicly because you wanted kids to see that it gets better. But from your experience, you know that women well into, you know, their 30s, 40s, 50s also need to hear that and see that. And um, so can you tell us about the process of what it was like to, for you to make the decision to come out both to yourself, to the public, whatever you'd to like the, to share to with To the us? world. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it was a it was a what I put it you know it was coming out was something first of all it was a voice inside me that had always been there it wasn't like what <laughs> it usually I, yes I no, understand that I suddenly got whammed in the head and I thought it was always a voice in me that amplified over the years so by the time you know um I had gone through a divorce and I was looking at my life in this sort of struggle that I felt I was in. It was like a moment suddenly clued into me like, oh, wait a minute, this, I don't have to try and repeat a a sort of marriage with a man and I, I, I don't have to look for that. That isn't, I can be something now completely different and much more true to who I was at that point. So I really found that that, you know, with the help of my therapist, of course, 
that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, we'll, we'll write thank you letters to the therapist later. <laughs> I really found that that it was a it was something that I had to do. It suddenly became urgent that this that it had to happen, not because. There was someone in my life that I needed to now, you know, be out with or open with, but because I wanted that in my life, I wanted a relationship and I couldn't have something that would be a secret to my children, to my family, to, I, to the industry, like, oh, what if somebody outs you and you're, you know, what if you're found out and somebody's, you know, that you would live under any kind of fear for being who you are felt to me so unnatural and pointed out to me by my therapist who said to me, if that's the relationship you want in your life, then you have to make that room for it. You have to be brave enough to create the space that that could happen in your life, which was this revelation to me that, that I had to, in fact, you know, make the passage for that available in my life and and, and really sort of open my heart to it and the hearts of those around me. And I have to say, it was not hard with my family. My children were like, oh, remarkable, remarkable. Both of them so accepting and, and uh, you know, loving about it. Nobody, there was no great histrionics like, well, what about me? <laughs> <laughs> None of that. Right. They were so uh, just happy that I had found this in myself and was willing to sort of share it with them and that I would have a relationship, that I they were both really uh, just remarkable. My daughter, who, of course, was in first year university, and I knew that she would be, I knew she would be loving about it. I just, you know, you have that relationship with your daughter and I knew she would be understanding, but my son in an all boys school in grade 11, I was not so sure how that was going to go down. And it was really hard to tell him. And he was very sort of like, kind of, well, okay. <laughs> no big deal. Like, yeah, all right. Okay. Well, <laughs> sure. You know, whatever. And then, and then he comes back in my room and he knocks on my door and my, you know, I'd been divorced for quite a while at this time. My husband had moved back to New York and he said, like, because my dad moved to New York and my mom's gay. Could I get a car? <laughs> Very clever boy. <laughs> you raise them well. That's it. Go have some ice cream. That's great. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So it was, you know, that and my, my mother and my siblings and, you know, it was, Everybody has been really good about it. That's and, and it hasn't affected your career in any way, has it? No. And, and as a matter of fact, didn't even make a dent in anybody even thinking about it. You know, it, the same parts came my way, more parts, all parts. Do I play them a little differently? Possibly all of my characters now are secretly gay. <laughs> We won't tell anyone. I have to make a meme out of that one. <laughs> it's just possible. I'm just saying you're not questioning their sexuality. Just a little bit. Because it, that may be the most interesting thing about me. Right? It's the fact that I'm gay. You know? So I just add, mix that in with everything. That's a great I idea because that. we always think every female character we watch <laughs> is probably gay. <laughs> Or should be. Or should be. <laughs> should be, be happier if they were gay. Oh, oh yeah. You know it. <laughs> uh, you, you played gay characters uh, both long before you came out and uh, right before you came out. Did Some of our favorite movies. Yes, I have, to, I have to admit to... <laughs> yes, she has a confession to make. Yes, to uh, Loving uh, Mercy. A little bit more than she should. Th that oh, I yeah. I just... Oh, yeah. I, I know it's not one of your great oeuvres, you know, but... <laughs> not the movie, but the scene. That dressing room scene. That dressing room scene. That was a hot scene, wasn't it? It was one of the hottest. Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. And uh, that's that's especially when we said, Wendy should be gay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I might have said the same thing. Yeah. Well, actually... Wait. 
That's exactly what we're asking. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you ever? I mean, it's actually, it was, a, it was an interesting kind of progression because I started with Better Than Chocolate when you were the mother and you were, oh my God, my daughter's, you know. And then the second one, you were kind of, you know, curious and Peter Wilson helped very you along. Very curious. And then in An Unexpected Love, you played this very confident gay woman who had to help a baby lesbian along her path. Right. So, so you actually, in your movies, you, actually, you also had this kind of interesting process. <laughs> Interesting process, exactly. But I, I do believe something. I believe that, that our, our creativity flows to us in ways that we need it. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. So it totally makes sense. That these things come to your life because I needed to hear this and see this. And so these things that, you know, from Better Than, better than Chocolate and Unexpected... These things came into my life because they were steps I needed to take along the way. And fortunately for me, I was able to say yes to them. You, you said that uh, those roles came to you when you needed those roles to kind of, again, kind of move you along the process. And I was just wondering if at the time when it was happening, if you were conscious of it, if you were kind of thinking to yourself, you know, if you were moving along and actually realizing what's going on or if you were oblivious. No, no. I, I was what was going on for sure. It sort of felt like suddenly I was in this pool that I was like, oh, right, this is, oh, this is nice over here. Yes, <laughs> maybe, you know. But I think because, because I was married and had two children, I didn't see any way that that would ever, do you know what I mean? Happen, it, oh, yes. it didn't seem possible or probable that that would ever happen. And even then, um, I feel like through my life, I didn't see a lot of gay couples, especially women. I saw men, but I didn't see women. And I think it seemed to me almost like a bit of a foreign concept. I wasn't even sure what it looked like. Like, how would you be as a couple? And like, what would, you know, it, it felt to me a little foreign until I was sort there. of doing it in it. And then I thought, oh, yeah, okay. I you know, it's completely natural and normal and just like that. But I think for a long time, it had felt to me like an impossible thing that was not to be considered. Well, and as somebody, as, as somebody who works in as an actress and does TV and movies all the time, this is exactly why visibility is so important. This is exactly why we need to see those stories. Well, and what I was going to say also is that it, it you since you came out later in life, uh, the world... There, there were more. There was more of that to see. Right, that too. So, there was, uh, and, uh, and now it's like it's ever, like everywhere. I mean, oh, when we got yeah. married, I, 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 I was never ever going to get married, and I, I also mm -hmm. came out well, lateish. But uh, we would. I call. Oh, my wife this, my wife that, my wife this, my <laughs> wife that, and I. She I found really enjoys out that, using because we got married <laughs> right after um, uh, Doma fell. The Defense of Marriage right, Act. The Defense of Marriage Act. We got married as soon as we could. And um, wow. everybody was like, oh, how nice for you. Oh, that's so wonderful. Oh, congratulations. Now, we People, live in New York. We live in New York City <laughs> and Martha's Vineyard. So, uh, but New York City especially. People that you would never, grocery clerks. I mean, you know, yeah. it was just, it was so, the times are very different it, yeah. and, and it, there was a jubilation sort of when things started turning our way in the world don't you feel that way it certainly was and i certainly do and i know exactly what you mean it's sort of like suddenly everybody is like they're happy for like oh, hi. <laughs> it, it was moving it, wow. yes exactly <laughs> like good for you that's it, what i think it makes of course, it makes there's a, a sort of residual sort of effect. It makes everybody feel good. Yes. It makes well, it makes all the liberals and you know <laughs> pro love people. Yes. It makes me feel good that this has happened. Yes, at last. No, wanted it to, to stay that way. People wanted it to change, and it changed. And and I think you know that those that really see the what's important in the world is love. 
And yes. why, why would you ever think that it wasn't just the most natural, wonderful thing? Well, especially now that I think so many people are out and so many people in the public life are out that is yeah. kind of it's everybody, hard to negate. everybody knows somebody who is gay. And it's very hard to make that them when it's somebody in your family, when it's a friend, when it's so all of a sudden, all your all the, you know, the preconceived notions that you had about what that, that looks was. like, wait a second, but I know this person, and I like this person, yes. it doesn't feel like it's this that, person is my son, this yeah. person is my neighbor, this person is my wife. <laughs> that's a that's a big <laughs> boy. <laughs> um, but at the time, I mean, it's amazing to think about really how things changed so, so fast, fast in, in such a short amount of time. And so fast. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even in Canada, <laughs> which was way ahead, ahead of America, of um, I, I think that in 2003, when uh, An Unexpected Love was made, it was a big deal. And, it was a big And it was on Lifetime, right? So, uh, you know, yes. uh, not on Showtime, not on HBO. It was, you know, and, and it really opened the door to a lot of women. And I think you got a lot of response from that. Am I right? Yeah. You got a huge amount of response. I mean, it was overwhelming was it unexpected <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of unexpected love <laughs> and what did that feel like what did it do to you it it I, I i was shocked and then i was like oh my god this is a huge there's obviously an enormous portion of the population that is craving their stories being told like people are starved for their stories and even now i find i'm oh, yes. like I'm not enough not nope. enough can't get enough of it not enough gay stories you know i i'm like i think oh and there's another heterosexual story i don't know that i'm so interested in going to see it because exactly. i know what that story is and you know so i but i think at the time it was just like pow this thing came out and it was it was powerful. Yes, and it was. I got, I have to say, never, I mean, that fan base, I have, I still have some nice blankets that people <laughs> said they me and like embroidered things and vases and I mean, gifts. People There's said, no... it was so, I was shocked. I was just shocked. It was and they so will lovely. be yours forever. Exactly. Oh, lesbian Forever. fans There's are nothing like a lesbian though. fan base. Yeah. Like, Except for maybe a sci-fi well, fan base. Well, and then when, <laughs> yeah, then and when, and when the actress playing the lesbian turns out to be a lesbian, that's a pretty big bonus. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I think we need a sequel for An Unexpected Love, by the way. No, we've, I've been, I've said that to Lee. Really? I, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. It could be time, actually. It could yes. be time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You okay. heard it here first. Yeah. Well, well nobody is shy about doing gay or lesbian roles anymore. That's another thing. No. It's no. no threat to anybody's career. Every big star is out there kissing and having sex. Well, with... wait, wait, wait. But in the an unexpected love sequel, are Mac and uh, what her what was her Kate? Are Matt and Kate still together? Oh, you might be on. Who knows? <laughs> Dude, Mac might have just moved right along. <laughs> I can't stand this thing with the children and the mother and oh, the husband. Oh, oh. Children and the yeah, exactly. <laughs> it would be fun. Now you know they are rebooting the L word, and I've been I've been lobbying for you on the L word. <laughs> oh great, thank you so much. Uh, we we know we We're know a girl who know a girl who knows a girl, yeah. and so <laughs> we want you in the the reboot of the L word for sure. I know. That. <laughs> well, okay, so we have confirmation from you that if they give you a call, you will not say no. I will not say no. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Um, but you know, we, we, you've also been very outspoken about um, just women in general and in Hollywood and in the industry. And um, you've become quite a, quite a feminist activist from what I can tell. <laughs> I mean, first of all, I think if you're a woman, you should be, right? Well, you know, it's... I. I now see that the people that I've always admired are people that are outspoken feminists and, you know, that use whatever platform we're given, in, you know, to help sort of bolster a cause that we believe in. And certainly, you know, feminist, it's human rights is what it is. Exactly. Of course. Exactly. If you're a woman, you should Women's be rights are human's right. <laughs> Human rights. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So. And, and you know, do you, do you Hillary find... Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't get us started there. Uh, oh. <laughs> um, do you, I know we're all going to take a pause. No, not yet. <laughs> a moment of silence. <laughs> Um, and and you are moving uh, on. <laughs> well, you are. Uh, I, I love that you are outspoken about everything now. I love that. And you have Twitter, which is a great tool, right? <laughs> to just say everything that you want to say and put out there, and use your, your platform to really speak up and you know for yeah. for things. And I was wondering if you felt um, in the industry that really things have changed for women. I mean, I know that television, especially, there's more room for women in television. Movies, I find that it's still a struggle. But are they are they just so women of a certain age? Let's say when I say of a certain age, I hate using that line yes, because but, it's basically over forty. Yeah. Um, are they? Do, is there really a change in the kind of roles that you're seeing, or is it really mostly women now playing mothers and grandmothers rather than girlfriends and wives? Um, that's interesting. I think there are more parts. I think there's. I think broadcasters have gotten wise to the fact that the the audience is female. Mm -hmm. and women want stories about women right. and about they want to see themselves reflected back in their whatever sort of roles they are. So I do find that more and more shows, I think, have female leads. The, the women sort of take the leads and the men can be the boyfriends and husbands. <laughs> it's true. I, I agree, but I'm glad you feel I, that way as an actress. Yes, I do feel that there are a lot more shows. Now, maybe... I'm not watching those other shows or auditioning for those other yeah. shows. I am watching the shows that have strong female leads. So I feel like, to me, there feels like a great wealth of new shows that are female centric. Well, and you, you know what annoys me though? That, uh, you know, and this is the proof of how more evolved women are. <laughs> That you're saying women want to see their own stories. Women have watched men's stories for just much like gay people have watched straight people's stories for years and years. We were still able to relate. Yes. We were able to enjoy. Why should women role? Why should movies and TV shows about women be for women? Why can't men enjoy them too? And I think they do. I think they do. I, I don't I, think. I, I don't think filmmakers for a long time gave men credit. <laughs> credit. Uh, now I could be wrong. Maybe. But they you, were just oafs and just wanted to see, <laughs> you know, I mean, but I, I, you know, I mean, these, these movies and TV shows that are having, you know, making lots of money and that are female led, uh, it can't just be women. We're only no. half the population. Exactly. But I think also that, that when, you know, couples go to decide what to watch now, women get a say. Absolutely. There's stuff that women want to watch. And so, you know, when when you've got something on, even like Fleabag, have you seen Fleabag yet? Well, we Which watched is, one episode. A it's couple a little of episodes, too straight for us. <laughs> but well, anyway, Kristen yeah. Scott Thomas, but I wanted to see. Yeah, she's very good. Yeah. Yes, she's she is. Very interesting. And she's written and written all of these. And she she's also Killing, Killing Eve. Eve. Killing mm -hmm. Eve. That yes, she's yeah. she's a very very clever girl. She's a very clever girl. So even though she's straight, I can watch it because I am so taken with how clever she is oh, and yes. how she does you know, that. The women don't have to be gay. It just has no. to be women. No, no, it was... <laughs> Women. The, exactly. the first the first season just was really straight to me, so I stopped like after the second episode. But it, it, that that's just it doesn't bother that's me. Just me. Much. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. yeah. Stay with it. Yes, I'm okay. a gold, I'm a gold star lesbian. Lo I'm a little tender, but <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> but I did see a retweet about uh, Gentleman Jack. So you're a fan? Oh my god, <laughs> love Gentleman Jack. Everybody's a fan of Gentleman Jack. Everybody. Right. Who, it's so brilliant, and Saran is it's so amazing. Oh. So good, so good. I'm just. I was thrilled with it. Yes. Just thrilled. Oh, it's gold. It Right. You know, she's so clever. I love oh, her. Oh, Sally is just a genius. Yeah. yeah. She really Well, and is. actually the detail which you were in was based on Scott and Bailey, which you also wrote. Right. That's and right. And Saran was also in it. The detail was based on Scott and Bailey. Yeah. And That's we had right. a, a little glimmer of a hope there with Fiona maybe being gay, but then they canceled the show. Then they canceled the show and we had no chance, but she was. So there we go, there ladies. There we go. No. Well, because Amelia Bullmore's our, character was yes, gay. Yes, she was bisexual. Well, yeah. at least bisexual. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a wonderful show. I was very, very sorry that yeah. they, uh, that they canceled it. Did you guys get any reasoning behind that? No. No. 
you get nothing at all. Just, you know, I'm sorry that didn't work out. Mm-hmm. You know, what? It did work out. It did time. work out. Yeah. Worked out for us. <laughs> Yeah, it was a very good show. That's a real wow. shame. Uh, but uh, speaking of roles and whether, I mean, you seem to have roles coming your way all the time. But we do see, yeah, you do. We do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but we do see a lot of women, I mean, even, you know, women as big as Nicole, Nicole Kidman, Kidman, Reese Witherspoon, <laughs> who are producing their own material now. because Started their own production companies. Yeah, because they want to have the roles that they want to play. They don't want to just be, you know, kind of at the mercy of those does that that interest you absolutely and certainly that's something that i'm looking at really like to have been at this point i would like to be about 10 years younger do you know what i mean because i do know what you mean into that thing where yeah that looks so exciting i really want to do that except (laughs) (laughs) but you get to be your own boss then (laughs) yes but she that that endless energy anymore I mean, you could have fooled us. uh, What time is it? (laughs) The the good thing for you, though, is that you don't have to produce your own work. You're still getting interesting work. You've always had interesting work. Uh, And you've always you've done whatever has come your way that that sparked your interest. You did big roles. You did small roles. You did um, uh, science fiction. You did um, (laughs) everything. And that that must have been wonderful to be able to just sort of pick and choose all of these things. Wait, that makes me wonder, what have you not done yet that you do? And what is like the, the one thing that you haven't, like, you've done sci-fi, you've done wives, you've done, you know, lesbians. Sick, lesbians. <laughs> what, what is that one thing that you really want to do that you haven't done yet? If, if there is such a thing, I mean, you have what, 140 credits to your name? Wow. So. I, you know what? It's so funny because you'd think that there would, but there's, it doesn't take it doesn't take much to catch my interest <laughs> fast character yeah. i mean honestly i've done i've taken jobs that where there was like one scene one line that i really liked i've you seen know, them and, all <laughs> oh i could do something with that and then it's sort of there it's like a little thing opens up there's something in a line or a description or something that suddenly is like this little portal that you go mm-hmm. through and really that life sort of opens up and i think oh that's an interesting life to look at oh that would be fun to try you know and then like you know halfway through the movie i'm like okay and i've tried it and <laughs> <I'm done> it. <laughs> moving on <Next>. yes. <laughs> but but it it's hard to say what i would what i'm dying to do right now that I'm not doing. I, you know, I really, this is a, I'm loving this job right now. It is so much fun. And, you know, I can't, I'm sure I love playing now, like big matriarchs, Mm -hmm. women like with a, I've always thought that the the idea of of being the head of a big family would be fun in that sort of way, almost like a soap. Dare I say? Mm-hmm. You know, Dare you say? I, I'm a soap. I'm soap opera <laughs> weekly edit, founding editor in chief. I, you you oh, dare well, there say we go. it? There we go. <laughs> you know, truly, it's all those human relationships that we all know that you know that are so juicy. There's so much stuff to play in all of that, and and I've always I like that idea of, you know, and. A little bit in a way I'm kind of doing that right now, but I'd like, you know, to be a bigger family and her to be, you know, how they sort of battle the how the matriarch can sort of, you know, pull people up or push them aside or, you well, know, there are shows a lot of shows like that now that are matriarchal shows. And uh, I, I think you'd be you'd be great. And I, I, I'm sure something if not three or four of those things will come your way because it's a very soaps. All of primetime TV now are soap yeah. operas, and they're going back uh, to sort of um, like this grand hotel. Oh, yes. <laughs> they're going back to the old-fashioned primetime soaps, and they're doing them, you know, with the uh, uh, more more finesse. And yeah. uh, there's a lot of uh, you'd be fabulous in that. That's great. Yeah. I really like that idea. What I I know what I don't want to do. I'm not really interested in doing more procedurals. So the idea of learning all that cop speak or that lawyer speak or, or that doctor speak. <laughs> I tell you, ladies, I cannot. Learning those lines is so 
hard because it's like learning Japanese. You're yes. just sort of it makes no going, sense. But, the technicality of it. it, it it's and then just... you have to learn how to do it really fast because, of course, everybody talks really, really fast. Blah, 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 and it's going. And I just now I'm on set and I'm just like, oh, no, this is going to be so hard. Did you did you just think, oh, because I know like we heard that the people of ER would like write their their terms and stuff on okay. patients, on patients, patients, bodies. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, we had. <laughs> Everywhere it was, it was like I always wanted my character to wear glasses so I could actually see <laughs> them on, on Saving on Hope, board where I had my lines. That's oh yeah, fantastic. no, that's I much prefer real life stuff mm -hmm. like you know talking to your son about taking over the ranch. You know, I'm <laughs> not my real life, but I imagine it. But yes, but it's re it's somebody's real life. And it's, uh, yeah, exactly. And if God forbid the exact word doesn't come to you, you can ad lib it because you, it's just you English. Can. You know? Exactly. <laughs> it's not Greek. It's not Latin. It's not, it's not <laughs> English. And so I, I really those, those kinds of roles, I'm sort of, you know, and I'm also getting to the age where I'm not as, as sort of um, attractive to them for those kinds of roles. So I'm, I'm hoping that it becomes more kind of, you know, more, more serious meaty stuff rather than just somebody's yeah. girlfriend or somebody's wife or, yeah. I mean, there's a yeah. blessing in that, right? Because I, oftentimes I see those roles and I think, you know, these women have so much more to offer and you reduce them to that, you know, yeah. to just being somebody's girlfriend. It's so boring. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> well, wants. our gain. Yeah. <laughs> but as far as we're concerned, you're still a leading lady and a love interest and uh, maybe, maybe more lesbian I think lesbian. there are many Just people who feel that way, so I don't think... Oh, yes. Yeah, and anyway, especially in Canada, I mean, you are it in Canada. You are the I'm Wendy Cruson. Canada has a lot of very fine actors. I know. No, 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 that's not no, what we no. meant. No. We, we, we are big fans of we uh, Canadian Canada television. Canada can appreciate you when Hollywood has not yet appreciated no, you as much, much as Canada uh, has. I mean, you had working. In fact, I, you were in Hollywood for like about 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. made you decide then you to come home to Canada? Well, I think because the marriage was ending, mm -hmm. I really felt the need to be home. I felt the need to be in a place where I had support system, my, my family, and a place where, where both um, Michael and I, my ex, could work and go home to bed, you know, not having to travel, constantly be getting on a plane to go to some location. So Toronto really offered that mm -hmm. thing where I thought, you know, we can both work here. It's got a great industry. We can, our children can be raised in a nice place where, you know, I have family. And I really felt like it offered us exactly that thing where you can, ha where you can have a balance. You can have your life and your work. Anyway, and, and you're very that. appreciated in Canada. Uh, so it, you... Yeah. Anyway, half of the American productions these days shoot in Canada. In Ca yeah, Vancouver. <laughs> Every shooting, yeah. I know. In Vancouver or Toronto, that's where almost everything is shot. So you don't even, you know, it's <laughs> right there. Yeah. But it's been interesting because I got to be part of sort of building this. Um, I got involved with the union, with the actors union, when I came up to Canada. And um, our union at the time had a... An, fantastic executive director named Brian Topp, who really saw the industry was collapsing in Canada. So our, our, our studios were closing down, the equipment company rental were leaving, and he saw this sort of window of opportunity to pull together all the guilds and the unions and the producers and the production come the studios to form Film Ontario which could go, rather than all these disparate groups going to the government asking for their specific asks, that we could go as one as an industry and ask for stable tax credits. Because once you have stable tax credits in place, it's a building block for your finances for your television show or movie. And that's what people are looking for. They need that one building block to then, you know, get their loans from the bank and get all their hires done. And he was so clever in doing this because 
what he did was lay the foundation for what has become this huge industry now in Ontario. And so we still continue that work, making sure that we're part of Film Ontario and lobbying the government. But it has turned Toronto into a film centre. And that's a remarkable thing. It's just remarkable. It is amazing. Almost nothing to having this enormous, vibrant industry. And everybody's working. And there are parts, and there are American parts to be you, had. That's fantastic, because also I know that you spoke about a law that was passed in the 90s about that, that didn't, um, didn't require networks to show Canadian uh, productions on primetime. Has that changed? Because I know that was a very big blow to the industry. It was a huge blow, and it hasn't really changed. They still have no requirements. They do it. They put something on, but what has happened is CBC has really stepped up as our Mm -hmm. national broadcaster, and they are put on all Canadian dramas in prime time. So you get Schitt's Creek and Anne with an E and all these wonderful shows that have come out of CBC really being strong and strength. But the other networks still just simulcast American American shows. shows. They have an occasional Canadian show. They do American shows. You used to have a, 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 vi- a very vibrant industry. I mean, I worked as a temp when I was uh, still trying to be an actress for the Film Board of Canada. And uh, oh. <laughs> I know, isn't that hilarious? What? Yes. Oh a friend of mine worked there full time. And she got, you know, I used to temp around when I, I wasn't acting, which was most of the time. <laughs> and I, I spent a lot of time at the Film Board of Canada. And they, I, we were, I was always very impressed by how much support the government which is yeah. something that's so foreign to America. As yeah, from the used government to give, uh, Yeah, yeah, no. Not I mean, so much. Not anymore. We do get, we, we get tremendous support from the government through telefilm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, you know, a, a tremendous amount of support. But it doesn't necessarily, you can't, you know, the broadcasters are still going to do what they're going to do. But traditional television, that traditional model is dying anyway. So, yeah, it's all over it's, the top. Yeah. It's all, you know, streaming services. I mean, even so. the, even the, the show, that you're, uh, yeah, the show that you're shooting the, now. The new exactly. show. Yeah. I mean, to, to us, it's actually a problem because how many streaming services can, can you, you have? pay for? You I know. mean, you know. Exactly. That is going to be an issue. But at least we get to pick and choose. And at least we get, you know. Good, co- ex- exceptional content. Yes. That- content i mean talk about the golden age of television oh, it, oh. it is and we're, we're we the point where we have so too much to watch much television <laughs> and also we're movie addicts so we're we're, we're in front of screens <laughs> i know we are too it's just you know i'm just but it's always thrilling to and sit down anytime you want and There's put something on to watch there is something great that you can watch. Several things great you can watch. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then there's binging where you don't, you know, you, you sit there and you watch 10 hours of TV. That is, you can't, yeah. Um, yes. But, but you've said um, that it was important to you in terms of you are very involved in the union. You are very involved in pushing for Canadian productions. And I think beyond, you know, just getting work for Canadian actors, you said that it was important to you to tell Canadian stories uh, as opposed to American stories, you know, that you get you know, imported to you. And I was wondering what you think or feel the differences between Canadian stories and American stories. Well, there's a complete, there's a, it's a completely different culture, even though we share so much, so much, a language, our currencies are the same, that border, we share a tremendous amount, but we are a distinct and different society. And I noticed that when I moved down to the States thinking, oh, this is just going to be the same. And here I am. The longer I was in the U.S., the more Canadian I became, because I realized those things that aren't always popular in the U.S., which they consider almost socialist. You mean health care? Health care and all those things. Yeah, that I that those were things that I didn't realize I held dear, but I do. Mm-hmm. It just cause it's a different point of view of the world when you're not america america is like this big huge thing that hears american voices it's just you know and when you're outside of that you have a very different world view and i like the different world view and i think canadians are very funny <laughs> a tremendous amount of humor and i think that you know i think it's important just for 
for everyone's perspective that these voices are heard and these stories are told and it and you know i've i've always wanted i love seeing them i love seeing our own stories and I think other Canadians do too. So it's always been a fight to start. Uh, I think so we, we, we like seeing them too. And in fact, we're all moving to Canada. Exactly. So. I was going to say. <laughs> Come on up, ladies. I don't know. If... You've got my number now. You can. I'm going to. I'll, I'll, I'll step up, really. Okay. Well, well, we'll wait till after 2020 and then we'll make yeah, I know. Our, I know. our decision. Oh. Do you have yes. a favorite? Am I putting you on the spot? The okay, candidate for the Democratic uh, primary. Um, you know, God, I think I think any of the women really. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah, we're 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 big Kamala Kamala, Kamala Harris, Harris uh, yeah. supporters, but um, it's true. I I'd be grateful for any of them to win at this point, but I think the women are amazing. They're amazing. They're really amazing, but you know, it's just. It, I mean, what a, a fearful time. Oh. Do you watch The Handmaid's Tale? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I haven't watched any of the season, so don't, because we've been saving it. But Put on your big girl panties. Yeah, it's, really? Oh, yeah. It's not easy. Really? No, I was, and I, I've been scared since the beginning of it. I was scared right away. But now it's just, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it's really, you know, I'm all, I'm always, and of course I have a daughter who lived, I mean, my children are both American, right. you know, born down there. I have deep ties, deep ties, but it, it makes me fearful. I'm, you know, I'm always keeping their Canadian passports up I was going to say, but they have dual citizenship, right? Yeah. Oh, thank they need to come home. That's fine. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. I mean, you're going to drive down to Maine. Just like yes. Are. Because Pull really, somebody over the border. if 2020 you know, doesn't go our way, you're going to have to build a wall. Because <laughs> we're coming. We're coming. <laughs> let's, let's hope not. Um, yeah. But but since you are, I mean, you, I don't know, you're beginning a little bit more political. I know, I don't know if you're interested in going into politics. Maybe. It's been a thought as well. It really? has been a thought again. Again, it's the energy level That's thing. That's right. Like, and I didn't want a big job like that because I want to do it right. You want to do it well. You'd have a responsibility that would, you know, do I have that energy? I mean, I talk about this a lot um, with my partner, Julie, and we talk about sort of what's next. What do we really want to do? What can we do that's meaningful at this point? And, of course, politics comes up a lot. And we really, you know, think about it and consider it. But it has to... You know, it's about using your energy more wisely, I think is what I understand. About. And so if we can sort of figure that out, then, you know, that's definitely a possibility. You have to come there and do it here. We need <laughs> no, to do it here. She can't come and do it here. She's got to do it there. <laughs> but strong here. women anywhere in office anywhere. helps strong lifts, anywhere. lifts the boat. Whole boat floats higher. Mm -hmm. And what would be, if you were tomorrow, if you were elected into whatever office, um, what would be the first issues you would tackle? What, what is like your higher priority? I always say, if you were good, if you were queen. <laughs> well, if, if you I were would... queen is a different story. Yeah. <laughs> well, Philip and I, <laughs> um, if I was queen, if I was like queen of the world. Yeah. See, that's a different question. That's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if, I, if I mean, it really could, it would be climate change. Bravo. I, I, I just cannot think of anything more pressing, more urgent, more necessary. If there is one thing that keeps me up at night, that makes me anxious during the day when I think, what is that, what is that level of anxiety that's running through me? Constantly. It, constantly. It's what are we going to do about this? How can we turn this around? I've just read the most amazing book called The Overstory by Richard Power, and it won the Pulitzer Prize. I highly recommend, and it's about trees. And it is the most remarkable tale, but it is the urgency of climate change. And that has to be, it suddenly has usurped all, like, of course, I think women's rights help climate change. I mean, I think all of that helps, but that's, our pressing problem. Yeah, I mean, if there's no planet, then no. there's nothing <laughs> there's, much to do about. 
that's it. It's over. And we don't have much time to turn it around. Who knows? It might be too late, but we've got to try. Yeah, we've got to try. Yeah. So, you know, okay. so if you have any ideas, like policy ideas, let me know. Oh yeah. Well, we we, are, we have a lot of, a lot of ideas. Yes. <laughs> so I mean, you know, the, the energy, the, the the question of the energy level to me, a lot of it is also not even physical energy, but the emotional energy because it's so. I yeah. mean, especially now in today's world, because it's not just America. We see it around the world, and it's so dispiriting so much of the time that I don't know how people who who care, you know, who are not narcissists, sociopaths, we know who we're talking about, but who really care. I don't know how they do this this job. It's very hard. I don't either. I just, I watch them and I, I, you know, people like Angela Merkel, for example, watching and I just think, oh, don't go down, Angela, don't go down. Don't go don't down. Who without, you know, I mean that it has, who knew that this would be where we would be today? But at the same time, who would have thought that you're talking about Germany? You know, yeah. rewind less than a hundred years ago. Where was Germany then? Yeah. So, exactly. you know, who knows how these things work who out? Knows? The world exactly. turns in the mysterious world, ways. It certainly does. I mean, these have been all been very surprising times, but I just want those women to keep moving to the forefront and staying there. And it has to be there. Yeah. Because yeah. women are the nurturers. They are more than that. Way yeah. where we can be anything, but that that need to nurture means the planet as well. Well, tell Wendy about your theory about the testosterone and your... <laughs> oh, yes. I, 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 I have a way to save the planet. Uh, we just need it, to find somebody who can make who it can work. Who can figure out, out this. It's called testosterone leaching stations. <laughs> and once a month, all men have to go to these testosterone leaching, leaching stations and have a little bit of testosterone removed from their system. <laughs> and I think that could save the world. <laughs> I have I an idea for something. a cartoon and everything where these big burly guys go into this little <laughs> testosterone leaching station, lines and lines of them, and they all come out wearing nice suits and ties <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah, singing show I mean, tunes. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> So if you find somebody who can figure out the, the logistics of it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so now we're going to ask some fun questions. And then we're going to let you go to bed. Yes, I know you're tired. We could oh, go on no. and on. It's fun. <laughs> what is, and I know it's hard to, to ask, but what's your favorite character you've ever played? She said that. Well, no, that was the character that had right most now. impact. Oh, right now. Okay. Right. Is it always right now or is this specific one? No, it's always right always now. Right now. Okay. <laughs> that makes life easy. <laughs> it sure does. You want to ask the next one? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'm not going to ask this one. No, ask this one. Uh, oh, yes, this is a good one. <laughs> we're, 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 we're conferring. Uh, uh, okay, so if you could remake any movie and mm -hmm. star in a, the, the lead role, either male or female, of that movie, any movie that, that has been made, and you could be the lead, what would that be? I would be... Um... Isaac Dinson in uh, Meryl Street played of, in Out of Africa. Out of Africa. Wow. That's a wonderful choice. I, I just I went to Africa in 2016. Oh, you're thinking about Africa. I'm thinking about Meryl. Oh, <laughs> she's thinking about Meryl. I'm thinking about I think about Africa. But those together, uh, yes. I went. I just went to South Africa uh, last year and took my mother. And it's the second time I've been, and I love it. Doesn't oh, it my... feel like the cradle of the earth? I mean, yes. it really yes. does. I felt like. Transformed. Transformed. No, it really is a spectacular continent, despite all its problems. Uh, yes, but... it has many, many problems. And then there's the animals. Oh, the animals. To me, it was... The animals. The animals. Which are also disappearing I you know, know, with every moment they go. That's why you have to see it and feel it to know yeah, that you've got, exactly. to, got to save it all. But that's save a great it. role. You'd be wonderful in that role. <laughs> oh, Ruby, thank you, darling. <laughs> now, you, speaking of Meryl... Because <laughs> we always somehow end up speaking of Meryl. Yes, why is that? Um, you, she is the best, isn't she? The best. Um, you, you often get asked about the leading men that you played with. Which, all right, how many times can, you, can they ask you what it was like to kiss, kiss Harrison, Harrison Ford? Ford. <laughs> so boring. Right? Um, but you have acted with many really wonderful women that we love. Uh, Helen Mirren, Julie Christie, Stalker Channing. So many wonderful, wonderful actresses. Yeah. 
Who was the most exciting to you? Uh, I have to say for me, it was Helen Mirren. Um, I'm such a fan of hers and I had seen, um, her masterpiece theater. Mm. Now I can't remember oh, where she played. A prime suspect. Prime suspect. Oh yes. I was just in awe of Helen Mirren, just in awe. And I have to say she, even sitting there getting our makeup done and she just asks for a cup of tea. <laughs> thought that I would ever have such grace and poise and intelligence. She was really spectacular and as lovely and kind as can be. She's a great, she's a great broad, right? And she's a dame, right? Yeah, and she's a dame, yes. <laughs> and, yes, exactly. Full circle. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that because I adore her too. And, yeah, it's uh, always it's nice to know that... Uh, it's always good to know that the people that you admire are as you wish them to be. Yes, exactly. Isn't that true? Yes. Yeah. Are you a fan in those instances too, when you're in that room with Helen Mirren? Are you a fellow actor or can you not help but just like squeal a little bit on the inside? <laughs> on the inside. I'm squealing on the inside. That's very professional. Very professional. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Do yeah. you have a role that got away that you auditioned for and didn't get or that you, you, passed over. you thought, nah, that it was off and you said, nah, I don't think that's really for me. I don't have time. I you know, it's funny, I don't, I mean, I can't think of anything big that I really thought, but, but a lot of that is, I tend to, they happen and I let it go, happen and I let it go. So I always like, what's your favorite role? It's the role I'm playing now. Exactly. I tend to not overthink it. If I didn't get it, that was her role. That wasn't <laughs> mine. That was meant to be her role. So I can kind of move by, but I do know when I was very young, I had worked for the CBC and done a series for them for a couple of years. And they were doing a big movie of the week about a con artist named Betsy Bigelow. And I really wanted this part. And I was so excited. And I went in to talk to my producer who was producing the movie and said that I really wanted to do that movie. And he said, well, what part would you play? <laughs> and I said, what? the lead, I would play Betsy Bigelow. And he went, oh, Wendy, you've had your turn. And I have to say, it was the part that sparked me right out of Canada. I just thought, and done. I am leaving. And so when somebody asked me what I was doing next, I said, I'm moving to New York City. <laughs> Good and for it. That was that... the role. Really? That role, if something changed, it was a role that, that I didn't get, but that role really sparked change. Well, so, so the, even the role, that got, the role away, that got away moved you forward. Yeah. Moved me forward. Got girl. me right out of town. Yeah. Do, do you still, by the way, audition for things? Is it like, here, would you play this role, please? No, I audition. Really? Really? I get asked to do things. Not all, also. but I, mm -hmm. a lot. I do a self-tape. I sit here like this mm -hmm. in front of a phone, sort of. Oh, Ryan, you know, <laughs> do that, you know, like, <laughs> my phone, sending it, like hoping that the, you think but, that you have a thousand credits, you know, uh, <laughs> but they, you, I always say that, well, why don't they just look at my resume? They haven't seen anything, but they always want to see what you look like right, right now. now. Mm -hmm. it's, right. It's, it's, it's about what you look like. It's about what I look like. Wow. It's about what I look like. Well, this is, I'm sure. It's a drag. 100% of it, 90% of it is, it's, you know, of course, also how you do the part, but I can't, you know, I, I'm sure that there are lots of people that can do it sufficiently, but it's... How does that feel? It's all a these, all these years to have to deal with people caring about what you look like more than anything else. Is it just, ugh? Ugh. <laughs> it's exhausting. It's exhausting. It really, and... Before it was sort of, I don't know, when I was younger, I think it was easier. I don't remember it, you know. But no, I, maybe it was hard then too. Now when I think about it, there were lots of times. They'd give you notes, things you'd be working on a set, you know, down in some American studio doing some series or whatever I was doing. And they'd, they'd come down, some producers, guys, always ponytails, you know, come down. Oh, hey, babe, how you doing? You know, yeah. Oh, uh... so, yeah. Um, you know, we want her sexier, right? Make her sexy. That was always a big note, sexier. Wow. Now when I think, I mean, you could never 
now. Oh, no, they wouldn't dare. But, well, <laughs> but it was always, they were always trying to make you, they thought you were pretty, but they had to make you prettier. They had to make you sexier. 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 That's what they that's wanted what we, to see. That's what they wanted to see. That's what they wanted to see. And that was always sort of the, you know, that always hung over. But luckily, I was never quite sexy enough that you could, you know, I could That's play in those. your mind. I, no, I did. Yeah, that, that I could kind of slide through the middle of all that. I feel like I kind of skated along just between all of that. I didn't have to, like, I could keep working. I could be my age now because when you're never, when you're never the great beauty or the real, you know, when you're never that, you don't have to maintain that. You can just kind of be regular and just or keep if going. you're just a really good actress <laughs> somebody has i mean where's, where's that therapist of yours <laughs> yeah. i'll tell you though turn over a rock and you'll find a good actor there are lots of really there are good actors good actors yes there are good actors but then there are actors on another level who can play sue rodriguez who can play jane doe and that, not everybody can not do everybody could do yeah. that and also not everybody has the manager that I have, my agent, is my best friend as well. I and have to not tell you. That. And that's half of it is right there. If you don't have somebody that believes in you like that, that's in there just driving to get you those parts and pushing hard, lots of good actors, lots of great actors yes. don't on because they don't have that. So there's lots of different factors, you know? Yeah, yes. you have to be a good actor, but you have to have all that help and support as well. And get the I breaks. To, I have to tell you, though, that in, in the last couple of years that I've been dealing with your your office, your manager, and now with you, you kind of live up to that promise of Canadian being the nicest people, the nicest in, the people world. in the world. Well, they love you. And Amy, <laughs> Amy was so cute. She's because so darling. I, oh, I'm not, I don't have any, um, my hair looks so dry. My makeup is, and she said, you're going to be in hair and makeup after the show. So, it's so humid. I'm not really, but they, she said, you're gonna do, and you're going to do it Friday night. And I said, oh, okay, Friday night. Okay. She said, and you're going to download Skype and this is how you're going to do it. I mean, she walked. She's me. fabulous. She loves, you, she loves you too. She said, you're going to do it this week. Cause every time she says, I said, oh yes, I want to do that. I really want to do that. I'm so bad at getting anything well, organized. We believe yeah. that. Amy always made us believe that. And it was uh, so we kept on for two years, I think. <laughs> we just, years. every once in a while. Really? We... You have been so patient. And well, she said, Hi, ladies are back. Just wondering. And I went, Yes, I do. I want to do that. Well, it was well, well worth the wait, oh, totally. believe me. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to let you go, though, before I have to ask you this. You said something about singing at some point when you were doing gang related and you were singing with two pack show tunes. Do you sing? What's what's going on there? How have we not heard you sing yet? Uh, well, because there's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And but I will tell you, I started out in musical theater. That's where I began, which a lot of people did. Yes. But I wanted to be a singer so badly. I mean, that's really what I wanted to do. And if I had a good voice, that's what I would be doing. But yeah, no, I kind of, I let that slide. I didn't really continue with voice. So no, What's your favorite I'm music? loud. I'm nice and loud. But I have <laughs> you know how to great. project. Exactly. Well, that makes up for a lot what, of sins. What's your favorite musical? Oh my God. Well, I did The Boyfriend. That was the one that oh, I- Oh, very cute. Julia. Julia she's Queen of my heart. Julia. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I it, love that. I, so much fun. And I played Maisie Merriweather, and I loved it, loved it, loved it. And I would just, you know. So that's the role so, that got away. You know, there may, be, there may yeah. be musical theater in your future. Well, you never actually, can tell. I like that attitude. And it, you know what you should pitch to the next uh, TV show? Now all these TV shows are doing a musical episode. Doing musical episodes, exactly. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to start those voice lessons it's again. It's a great idea. In your spare time. Exactly. <laughs> in spare time. But I think it's not a bad idea, and it's fun. Voice it's lessons are fun, and you get to sing, and and who knows, you know, when that opportunity might come along. Uh, they love TV stars. Anyway, nowadays uh, in the studio, the you stage. can do anything. They really do. Do you know? Have you ever read the book, um, Julia Cameron's book, uh, The Artist's Way? Oh, of course. Oh, I, I I haven't read it, but I have it. I, ha <laughs> She's I have read, read it. it. <laughs> so I. Started 
into that a while ago, and this is what she would say: is go and take those voice lessons okay. because you know you, you want a door wide open, and it's, you'll be ready yeah. to walk through it. And be ready to walk through it. That's exactly right. That's and, all. And it is. you know, and have faith in yourself because if Piers Brosnan can sing, Ugh. you can sing. Yes, but Piers Brosnan can sing, <laughs> but he did it. Wasn't that funny? Yes, oh, he was he's the such the he's the cutest man, but he cannot <laughs> sing. No, but cannot it did, sing. No. no. <laughs> um, okay, so speaking of fun, what do you do for fun if you have any time for it? Yeah, what do I do for fun? Um, I, um, <laughs> that's sad. It's sad. I watch TV shows. <laughs> that's good. That's what we do. That's what we do. <laughs> I, that's fun. Julie and I can go through a lot of shows. We love watching TV shows, going to movies. Um, we like traveling. So mm -hmm. we're doing some traveling, which is nice. I like going down and spending time with my daughter in Maine, you know? Oh, Maine. is that where she is? That's great. Yeah, yeah. Nice and close I, to you. Yes. I like going up to my mom's at our cottage right now on Georgian Bay, and I love going up there. Lovely. I love being in nature. Mm -hmm. That's what I do for fun. I love being in nature, taking a walk in the woods or, you know, that I love. Do you have, do you have pets? No. Because I, I, I'm at the stage now where I can have nothing that's depending on me. <laughs> yes. Well, you have a kind of a peripatetic life too, so exactly. Yeah. I get exactly. Yeah. And you don't want to worry. I'm on my way. Well, no, nature is. We're surrounded by it too here, yeah. and this is where we come you from, are. New York. It is so lovely. And we're well, in the it's woods, the perfect balance just... because most of the time we live in a jungle, in a concrete jungle in New York City. So we get to come here and just kind of breathe some fresh air and watch the squirrels, feed and the, the birds, and the chipmunks. I think it's a perfect combination, the two. It I is. think that's really a perfect, I love New York and I love being in the city, but to be able to escape like that, that's the perfect combo. It's the and then you miss the theater worlds. and the culture and yeah. the excitement. We can't wait to get back when we get back and we can't wait to come when it's time to come. <laughs> and exactly. I've been doing it for 26 years now, 27 years. No, and that's I'm sure. Now, do you go somewhere warm as well? Do you have a little spot in the middle I, to go? Well, somewhere? no, I don't care. It gets about. warm. It here. gets hot here. I, I mean, I, oh, hot there, yeah. 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 I mean, not I like New York. I mean, right now it's in the 70s, uh, 60s, Well, you 70s. have Celsius, right? So it's like in the 20s here. But in New York, it's already in the 30s. And it's going to... Yeah, Toronto is today. Is no. like... I know. You're having the same heat wave, I think. That, uh, yeah. Yeah. Under yeah. the same bubble, heat bubble. That's, yeah, yes. but it's a good thing that global warming isn't real. So it's just you know. Thank, thank goodness, it's all just in our heads. <laughs> no, it's God uh, hugging us closer. Isn't that oh, what Sarah Palin? Please uh, let me yeah. just stop you now. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, since you love playing real people, who would be <laughs> your dream role of a real person to play? Oh, wow. Who would be my dream role of a real person? I would, you know, okay, I'm going to just, because I, I never could do it now because it's, but I would love, if, if I was young and Hispanic, I would be <laughs> Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. <laughs> okay. That I would be a real person that... I want to. I want to. I want to do that movie right now, and I want to put projector right to president. You know. Yeah. Well, she's got a little time. Yeah, she's got, to, away she's to got go. a little bit of time to go, a but time. she's she's a firecracker. All right. Yes, she is. And I, I, I'm thinking more Ruth Bader Ginsburg in the middle part of her life, like as a sequel to on the basis of sex. As a sequel to on the basis of sex. <laughs> Facts, exactly, exactly. The only thing you said is Wendy's too tall. Yeah, you're a little too tall. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I could be your body no. double. <laughs> I'm, I'm small. <laughs> um, who is your, yeah, or has been, your role model or inspiration? Well, Meryl. I mean, I know we've talked about her before, and I, but there, there, a we that we live in this life where Meryl is Meryl on the street he is like that is just crazy you know that that I can't I am so riveted by everything she does I have to watch it six times because I just can't get enough of watching her 
think as that character transitioned through all those moments, I just adore it. So, are you, you know, are you watching Lies? Big Little Lies? I yes, we are. It's fantastic. Oh my God, she's. I mean, I hate her so much. She is, <laughs> oh, but she is so amazing. It's such genius. Genius, genius. And she does. I love that thing of transforming into somebody else. Like I love the teeth. Oh. A wig and teeth, the teeth and glasses. I'm just like, whoa. Well, the thing, like the thing about Meryl, it's funny because you talked about being average and kind of being able to blend. Meryl is Meryl. You see Meryl in, in everything, everything she, she does. does. And it, she still manages to To blend. disappear. Disappear. She still manages to disappear in everything. Now she's really, she's remarkable. So, you know, she's definitely been someone that, you know, I, but, you know, we have a lot, Kate Blanchett. No. And, no, just, yes. it's just remarkable. Well, have you given Perry the list yet of all the people that you want him to start putting you in movies with? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I give him no list at all. He just comes to me with goes here. This, <laughs> this. I'm just like, oh, okay. I'll start. I'll start sending him some suggestions. <laughs> Good. Hey, well, you know Amy. So yes, the, we'll send Amy suggestions. She's we're, wonderful. We're very Amy pushy suggests, like that. Amy will get them to Perry. That's She's great. wonderful. You have good people, and that's because you're a good person. Yes. And this has been such a delight. Such and I'm, a thrill. And we've technically... It's just so good of you to wait this long. And, you know, I'm, I just so appreciate your support. And, you well, know, your, that really means the world to me. It well, really does. Well, listen, I've, we've technically been waiting two years, but I've been waiting a long, long time because if you told me 15 years ago that I'd be sitting here talking to you, I wouldn't believe it. So thank you so much for being so gracious and so generous with your time. Really, My pleasure. My pleasure. And enjoy it there. Thank you. We will. And, and we'll in, be looking in, forward to seeing you in, in, in cowboy riding you know. and <laughs> roping. It's and cowboy it's I great. love those clothes. We might just have to pay four ninety nine. Yeah, we may have to pay four ninety nine <laughs> while the series is on. Uh, anyway, thank you, Wendy, so much. Uh, this has been really uh, a dream interview. It really has uh -huh. been. Okay. Thank you, and the best just to you always. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you so much. Good night. Good night. Okay. Have a great night. And if you want to move to Toronto. We'll hook you up. We'll, yeah, well, I mean, we'll uh, we'll give you a call. You got it. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. We we might need you. I mean, really. <laughs> Good night. Thank you, darling. Night, night, night.